So I want to report on a, on a joint work with Aravind, who kindly introduced me, and Hopkins. And I mean, I want to sort of preface this by saying this is really not a big deal, and it's just a sort of little side project, even in the paper where this is proved. It's only like one of several sections. But I think it's the end of the conference, and so it's nice to do something which is a little fun and a little interesting, but maybe not too hard. And also, I think maybe a lot of people here, they, they see these concepts for the first time, and then it might be an instructive example. Um, all right, so I have some sections, and the first one is about the introduction. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to explain what the words in the title mean. And uh, the first one that I want to talk about is this real realization thing. And um, so the real realization, this is, a, this is a functor which you can apply to the category of motivic spaces over the real numbers. Okay, so this real here, it means real numbers. So I have the motivic spaces over R. And I want to construct the functor out of it. And now, as you know, or have learned, or no, learn now, we'll see. Uh, this category here, it was uh, constructed out of the category of smooth schemes. So I'm starting here. And then it was constructed by essentially applying some universal construction. And what this means is that whenever you try to make a co-continuous functor out of this, it's basically the same thing, or it's, essentially, it's exactly the same thing as giving a co-continuous uh, any functor out of this category. And it just has to satisfy some properties, right? So if I make a functor from here, let's say to spaces, then there will exist at most one functor here which makes the diagram commute, okay? And you have to check some properties. Like, for example, you know that the affine line here goes to the point here. And so if it doesn't go to the point here, of course, it's not going to work. And this is basically the only kind of thing that you need to check. Um, and so the functor that I want to look at is just to take, well, the real points. I take some smooth scheme of R, look at the set of real points, that's the set, but you easily make it into a topological space by incorporating the ordering of the real numbers in some clever way. Um, and a topological space is a homotopy type, so that's a completely well-defined functor, and you can ask yourself, does this thing exist or not? For example, it sends the affine line to the real, to the real numbers, which are, of course, contractible, so it looks like we might have a chance, and of course, my, my talk is about this functor, so we, we believe that it exists, okay? So this functor here exists, and I denoted R for realization, and then there's a lower subscript R for real numbers, and it's called the real Betty realization. Okay, and so in general, if you have any motivic space, you can ask of R, well, what's the real Betty realization of it? What's some normal topological, uh, some normal space that I can get out of it? And uh, well, if you take a scheme, then it's very easy to get that scheme. Uh, or the real points of that scheme. And if you take something built out of schemes in a natural way, then I mean, it's also easy to say, right? Because this preserves co-limits. And so if you build something using schemes, you build it using the real points. But of course, if you have a space here, which is more abstractly defined, then it's not so obvious what to do. Because I mean, you have to write it as a co-limit of schemes somehow, and it might not be obvious how to do that. And uh, I want to explain one example of this kind of problem. Um, Ah, so one other thing is what I want to say that, of course, there are, there are related realization functors. For example, you can do this over the complex numbers, and I think you can easily see how. You get something called the complex Betty realization. You can even do this over the real numbers and look at the complex points and remember the C2 action, okay? So then you land in the C2 equivariant world of, uh, the world of C2 equivariant homotopy, uh, homotopy theory. And this is called the, well, C2 equivariant Betty realization. Um, but I will focus on this one today. So that's half of the title explained. Then we have to talk about these Albert McLean spaces. Uh, and here, I guess I want to say even less. Uh, what I will say is that there is a spectrum called HZ and exists in the category of motivic spectra, which I think we've also seen a bunch of times now. And it's called the motivic Albert McLean spectrum. OK, there are various ways to characterize it. You might say that it represents higher Chow groups, or you might say it's a zero slice of the sphere spectrum or some nonsense like that. But uh, I'll tell you at any point, if I use something about this, <laughs> I'll tell you what you need to know. 
Um, okay, and the spaces which make up this spectrum, this is what's called the motivic einberg maclean spaces. So I can do the following thing. I just take my einberg maclean spectrum, and then I apply some bigraded shift. Let's say sigma j comma i. And then I look at the infinite loop space of that. And uh, that yields some space, some motivic space. And this is called the motivic einberg Lane lane space. Okay, we need some notation for it. And the notation which I propose and which we use in the paper, and it's not completely controversial, is k z round bracket i comma j. Okay, so there's always this thing that you need two indices and you need to put them somewhere. And also there's always some action of sort of SL2 of z, um, which allows you to change the indices. And of course, typographically, you can change them. So there's tons of ways of doing this. This is the way I will do it. Okay. And now we can very easily ask the main question, right? Which is just, question, maybe task, or I don't know. Uh, what is the real realization of this thing? OK, so for some reason, which I'm not going to explain in detail, you probably want to assume for this that um, i is greater than or equal to j, or less than or equal to j. i is less than or equal to j here. And if you're already bored, then I uh, suggest you just try to work this out. Um, towards the middle or maybe the end of the talk, I will give you the answer. But I mean, it is slightly surprising, so it might be fun. Um, OK, so that's the goal. I want to explain what the answer to this question is. Uh, any questions so far? Excellent. So let me begin with one remark, um, which is the following, that this is essentially a problem in C2 equivariant homotopy theory. So one knows the motivic einberg maclean spaces, uh, they can be described using so-called infinite symmetric powers of schemes. So this is the motivic dual term theorem. Um, and now the problem is that the symmetric powers of schemes are singular. So we know what this functor here does to smooth schemes. We do not know what it does to singular schemes. But I think you have a guess. You take the, real, uh, you take the complex points with the C2 action, and you take that. Now, it's not immediately obvious, but one can prove that this is, in fact, correct. All right? And so what this tells you is that the C2 equivariant battery realization of this guy will be the symmetric powers of the C2 equivariant battery realization of certain spheres. And then there's this C2 equivariant dual term theorem, which tells you that that's the einberg maclean space again. So what we see is that sort of the C2 equivariant battery realization of this guy at least under this kind of assumption, um, will be an C2 equivariant Albert maclean space. So let's say Z, S, well, OK, I will write here S, I, J. This is, of course, very, <laughs> very not traditional C2 equivariant notation. But if you know what I'm talking about, you can make sense of this. Um, now this is, sorry? Right, so there's i many sign representations and as many trivial representations as you need to make it work out. Yeah. Um, and that's why I would, yeah. Um, but now, and so then basically what this is asking that, right, so then the real realization of this guy is just going to be the geometric fixed points of, uh, well, this is space, so it's just ordinary fixed points. There's an i here, there's, yeah. Like this? Good, good. So basically, you have this, this C2 equivariant homotopy type. You're just supposed to take its fixed point and work out what that is, right? It's purely a problem in uh, equivariant homotopy theory. Surely someone has done it. Uh, so the trick is that, I mean, this is not really the sort of einberg maclean space that these guys usually consider, because usually you just take some, some Mackey functor and put it in some degree, and this is somehow not that. But surely also someone who's good at equivariant homotopy theory probably, maybe, can work this out. <laughs> So I've asked some people who I think are good at this, and they didn't immediately know the answer, but OK. So you could do this, and I'm sure someone in the audience could do this. And I will explain some motivic way of f finding the same answer. Can you explain, so you know the answer of the complex point, but it's not obvious to the answer of the complex point? Not to me. Sure. Ah, OK, so now I've explained what the problem is. And of course, I could just give you the answer, but what's the fun in that? Um, 
So what I want to do is I will show you some ways of sort of creeping up on this problem and to trying to orient ourselves, like what could, what could possibly be the answer. Okay, and so I will offer you three partial answers to the question, well, to this question. And the first is some preliminary observations. Okay, so these guys, they're infinite loop spaces, so they're in particular commutative monoids, right? And um, this real realization functor, it preserves finite products and it preserves co-limits. So it induces an, a functor, a co-continuous functor on commutative monoids. So basically everything that's happening, it's happening in spaces, which is a bit scary. But actually they're all commutative monoids, even group-like commutative monoids. So if you know about these words, then you know that this should make it a little bit less scary. Okay, so what, what is that good for? For example, you know that if you increase this value j here, and again, you have this standing assumption there, if you increase this value j, then the einberg maclean space just gets replaced by some bar construction. Um, and now this functor here, I mean bar construction is just suspension in the category of commutative monoids, so our functor is just gonna commute with these bar constructions, right? So for example, if I want to do the real realization of k, z, i, j plus one, this is just the real realization of k, the bar construction of k, z, i, j, which is the bar construction of the real realization. Uh, and what the bar construction classically just does is it shifts up your homotopy groups, right? So basically, if you know one space, you know the bar construction, and you can go back via the loops. So in every weight, basically, you can choose one integer j where you work it out, and then you have the answer, basically, for all the spaces. So instead of dealing with two indices, you only have to deal with one. Seems like a little simplification. Um, okay. Another thing, obviously, which you can try when you have a question and you don't know the answer, you could look at some examples. Right, we can start, and I mean, there's two indices. We just said that one of them is kind of dumb. So basically, there's one indices, one index, this i thing. So let's just let's just start at the bottom somewhere, right? So now there's this z zero. I mean, it doesn't really matter which number you put here, right? We know what this is. This is just a constant sheaf z. Very easy. And um, all right, this real realization thing, it's a co-continuous functor, so it will send constant sheaves to constant sheaves, basically. And so what we learn, maybe not surprisingly, is that the real realization of k z of 0, comma 0 is k of z, comma 0. Now we're, we're getting towards a pattern there. So let's do the next weight. And um, so I said that I should be Less than equal to j, so I look at z1, comma 1. Again, so luckily for us, this is a very known space, and this is just gm. Which, you will observe, is a smooth scheme. So, I mean, again, very easy to do the realization, just get gm of r, also known as real line or without, without zero. Okay, and this is of course just homotopy equivalent to zero and one, uh, minus one and one. So the, as a group, this is just z mod two. Okay, so now it's getting a bit funky. The z in degree in weight one, which is actually a gm, turns into a z mod two. Strange, strange. And uh, so now we can play this game with the bar constructions if we want, right? So for example, k of z one, two, if I do the real realization of that, it's just going to be the bar construction of this, okay, which is also known as RP infinity. So now we're getting now we're getting into crazy stuff. There's some uh, RP infinity showing up out of uh, integral Einberg-McLean space, but apparently that's that's what happens. 
And uh, so we just have to figure out what happens in the higher weights. But uh, well, the problem which you run into is that we don't have an easy geometric description. That's not so surprising since the no. really Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not surprising to you. <laughs> No. <laughs> but it is a little bit funny. I, I made, and so it's going to just keep getting funnier like this. But OK, it's, it's not impossible. Anyway. So now I've exha exhausted the sort of preliminaries where I can get things without doing anything. So I can tell you about some other method for real realization. This is called row periodization. And so the idea here is, OK, this is some real realization of spaces, and it's scary hard. Maybe we can do something easier first. Let's try to think about real realization of motivic spectra. So you have this functor. And uh, let's say we start at SH of R. And then we will just go to classical spectra. Okay? It's just induced by the symmetric monoidal co-continuous real realization.